the answer, there's no good answers I could find you, I could find you. From the Sporting News Studios, this is the Fantasy Football Show with your host, Matt Litevsky. I've got all the answers, all the answers I could find you, I could find out. Welcome to Bold City, Eric. We're not in Bold City. No, we're not. We're Bold in the Queen City. City. I feel like, <laughs> we, yeah, we are in the Queen City. I feel like only like th- three people appreciated that as much as Which we three? did. Which three? Who are the three? Me, you, and probably one, one other, other person. person. <laughs> I don't know who, but what other? But yeah, the Jacksonville Jaguars coach is wearing the Bold City shirts. Like, that's a thing. Yeah, I was like, what are, who, why do they get called right. that? A I mean, they got bold, though. Now? They got bold in that big. Yeah, they did. Big fight against Buffalo. Big it's fight. Idiots. Look, uh, yeah, Leonard Fournette costing some people trips to the fantasy playoffs. That guy, man, he is on my. On the list? He's on my list, man. He's on the list? He's on my it's on list. on a lot of people's list. Well, we'll talk about him and the fallout from his suspension this week. And as we do every week, we'll break down the good and bad matchups for entertainment purposes only. We're not we're not saying starts and sits. No. Nah, we're not saying we never, sleepers and busts. We never do that. Just hey, here's who's good, here's who's bad. See what happens. <laughs> Run down, yeah, the highest trending players like we always do. Uh, but first we look back at last week. Let's do it. And we look at things we got wrong. And for the most part, I think we were pretty good last week. Yeah, yeah, we were all right. We were, we're pretty right. good. I mean, it, well, you had a big call, correct? Let's yeah. start with that. Oh, you want to start with the good stuff? Yeah, start with that. My guarantee of the Antonio Callaway TD right came through nicely early too. Mm-hmm. Early too. Guaranteed um, Antonio Callaway touchdown. Yeah, you don't yeah. get that from other fantasy. No, heroes. no, you don't. But you get it here. You get it here. Yeah, uh, Eric so yeah, that's pretty awesome. Fantasy I still lost, football expert. Still lost my game. Oh. Still also grabbed a last minute Curtis Samuel touchdown, which I was pretty happy about. I mean, if you're about. making moves like that, you still lose. I know. I know. Who's to blame? Me, Fournette. He had two touchdowns. Eh, Could have had more. Yeah, he probably would have. That's McCoy, Josh Allen. Lots of different people to blame. Yeah. Well, anyway, good news is my season's over. Okay. And, uh, Consolation bracket. Your season's over. Uh, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> so, uh, to stay yeah. last. felt great last night not making a waiver claim. Oh, yeah. Felt like my whole night was free up. waiver claim? Yeah, that's right. You thought you could backdoor your way into the playoffs before yeah, last well, week. Yeah, the back door was open for a little while. Yeah, Got shut really, pretty quick though. on Sunday. Not really. It was like the window was open. <laughs> I don't even think the door I was open. I've climbed in through a window before. Yeah. Have you? All right. So, who hasn't? That's something you got right. Something yeah. we got wrong. Like I said, there wasn't a ton, but we thought we we sort of poo-pooed LeGarrette Blunt. Yeah. Uh, which I think a lot of people did, playing the Bears. Yeah, I liked Riddick more. Yeah. Blunt out of nowhere. And then Blunt, because it wasn't just, wow, he got two short touchdowns. Like, he ran well. Yeah. He actually looked good running the ball. So now you look at them this week. They have, you know, they got the Rams. I don't, we don't know, I don't think, if Kerryon Johnson's going to be back. I'd be surprised if he was. Uh, but they have the Rams this week. Then I think the next two are Buffalo, Arizona in some order. Is this a guy that like fantasy owners are going to be riding to a fantasy championship? Well, I don't like him against the Rams. Why? Because I feel like that's a Riddick game. I mean, I guess. Like I, I always, I, I, I totally get it. But they're going to try to. They're going to try to run for a while, right? They're going to try to run for a while. But maybe he was a little hyped up for Thanksgiving. <laughs> You know, he wanted to be hyped up. He thought if he if he like scored more, had a good game, he'd get you know the big turkey leg I and think all that he's stuff. He's getting that anyway. <laughs> he's probably yeah. Uh, I like Riddick more this week. Maybe I'm, I mean Riddick still had Riddick. He had about fifty total yards last Riddick week. Is right, such a just bunch like low seven, end PPR. Maybe pony. seven catches. Not yeah, I think he had seven catches. Seven catches, forty eight yards last week. Right, it's not bad. I guess. Now we're going to play the Rams. They're going to be behind. What if they're not? What if they're not? What if they're not? They're not. What if they don't start getting behind till the third quarter? Do you really believe that? You're a Lions fan. Do you really believe that the Rams are not going to smoke them early? Uh, coming probably. off a bye? Coming just, off a bye? Well, coming off the bye, it is on the road. But look, I just feel like we say that all the time, and then sometimes it just yeah, doesn't happen. Yeah, and a lot happen. of times with the Rams, it happens. Now well, the Rams are a different team. I mean, we got the same thing. I mean, the Raiders are worse than the Lions, but Chiefs Raiders, right? Yeah. It's the same logic. But I, I mean, at the very least, the, the, the Lions are going to have 
two possessions before they're down by more than two <laughs> scores. <laughs> right, right. They're going to try to run them there. The Rams right. have a bad run defense. Yeah, they'll, sure. They're going to run And the ball. Lions are going to move the ball, so they'll be inside the five-yard line probably. Possibly. Yeah. He's an okay play. I don't know what my point was. I think he's an RB2. You asked if you asked if fantasy was going to be riding this guy right. through the playoffs, and those are good matchups coming up. But yeah. is Johnson back for those good matchups? Well, that's, that's the thing. But why, I don't know why bring him back. Like at this point, if you're the Lions, because his injury is maybe not that bad. I mean, that's the thing. Right? And if you're but, him, you don't want to sit out, well, right? No, you're he doesn't for sure. You want stats. Yeah. You want you know. So we'll see. But we were wrong about that last week. The Bears matchup scared us off. I can't remember if it was last week or two weeks ago. I was really bad mouthing Corey Davis. Yeah, well, well, why not? Why shouldn't you? Bad I was like, I've him? seen this act before. Has a yeah. good game. People get excited. Then lays an egg. Uh, and then last, you know, Monday night, he's got a tough matchup on paper. Texans are brutal against wide receiver. He goes out and has a huge game. Yeah. Well, Marcus Mariota is perfect almost. So he 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 might be the Jared Cook of wide receivers. Mm. Last four games, mm. six points. This is not. This is a standard league okay six points yeah 18 and a half points good 2.9 points there it is 19 and a half points there it is sounds like jared cook to me don't know what to do with that guy yeah. what a guy who's I, i've even... had him bench for weeks just because of that like yeah. reason like you never know like well, and and when it's because I'm, I'm pretty sure two weeks ago was i can't remember who was two weeks ago who they play uh, I was out of town, yeah. so I don't remember. I mean, can't possibly know that. I can't, I can't possibly remember that. But the point is, <laughs> last week... I wonder if the internet nah, tell us that. Last week, for sure, he had a bad matchup, and he has a big game. Like, those are the guys that are the worst. Yeah. Because there's some guys, like Peyton Barber is a guy who you could say... Colts. He had the Colts. Colts. He had a pretty good matchup. So it was okay. They lost 38-10. There should have been some garbage there. Right. But, like, Peyton Barber, you look at his game log, and it's like when he plays a terrible run defense or a team that gives up a lot of fantasy points to, to running backs, he goes off. When he faces even a moderately tough, he does nothing. So you kind of know what's going to happen with Peyton Barber. At least you feel like you do. But with, with a guy like Corey Davis, you don't know. Well, plus there's, like... There's the, is Mariota going to get hurt? And when Gabbert right. comes in, he's worse. Right. Um, the weird thing is, not really weird, but their run game seems to be getting worse. Yeah, D.L. Like, Lewis, big step back. Lewis is taking steps back. Henry is trash. <laughs> so, it's like, okay, they, stiff arm. so it's like, okay, there might be more opportunity for him in the passing right. game. Um, he's just tough. He's a wild card. Maybe next year. Yeah, so we're post-type gonna, sleeper next we're year. We're going to talk ourselves into him next year and... I'm not going to feel good about it. All right, the other thing I said, Ed Dixon revenge game was coming. I felt really strong I mean, about it. Did you feel it. really strong about that, felt though? really strong about Well, it, the matchup was good. The Panthers are so bad against tight ends, but yeah. I'm not going to kill you for that one. Actually, I want to bring up one that we both kind of said, and we were definitely wrong on, was the San Francisco-Tampa Bay shootout. Yeah, shootout. That didn't happen. Well, that was all because Marquise Goodwin got scratched. That's Other, all otherwise, that's the reason why. Shootout. What about yeah. uh, how about that? I love this phenomenon when you're watching a game and you're like, "Who's Jeff? Like Jeff Wilson Jr.? That's not a real player." <laughs> and he's like almost scoring touchdowns. He's like they scratch because they they healthy scratch Alfred Morris and Jeff Wilson. I think it's Jeff Wilson Jr. is starting at running back and he almost scores. And you're just confused right. the whole rest <laughs> of the game. What did I miss? I, mean, I was a big Jeff Wilson Senior fan. Yeah, I, I was like God. senior. Uh, but yeah, Jeff Wilson Jr. I hope that's his name. Uh, I'm not going to look it up. I don't want to. I like in my head calling him the, Jeff Wilson Jr. The funny thing is we said that game was going to be weird and no one's right. going to be watching it except gamblers right. and fantasy people. It was weird. It was, it was weird, weird that it was 27-9 and it wasn't a shootout. Right. It was weird that... Jeff Wilson Jr., 7 for 33. Yeah, and he almost, he had a touchdown called back. And then another uh, catch for eight yards. Yeah. So that was a classic where he, they call the touchdown, review it, hey, down at the one. And I'm, I'm Brita. And I'm like, oh, they're going to leave Jeff Wilson Jr. in, finish the job, give the rook the touchdown. But they didn't. And then uh, the, uh, the 49ers got stuffed three straight run, or stuffed two straight runs, fourth down, they were going to go for it, false start. And I was like, well, there you go. Why not, do you know what college you went to, Jeff Wilson Jr.? Oh, I mean, probably Harvard. <laughs> North Texas. Oh, same thing. That's the Harvard of the, of the South. Is it? Yeah. So anyway, all right, move on. We, I mean, we had to go to a search engine to find out who Jeff Wilson Jr. Yeah. was. And I'm excited to find out what we're, what we're going right. to be using this So week. now we're going we're gonna to go. we got to look up the highest trending, most search players. And I think this time we're gonna we're gonna put a modern twist on it. Oh, okay. We're gonna ask Surrey about these oh, players. Oh, okay. 
and we're gonna let Suri tell tell us. You say Suri? It's it's isn't it Siri. Suri is Siri is, is uh, Katie Holmes. Yeah, and Tom Cruise's Tom kid. Tom Cruise's yeah. kid. She might know. <laughs> she probably does. <laughs> might be super into fantasy. I don't know. Let's ask Siri. Let's ask Siri, not yeah. Suri. Yeah. That is what I was saying. Yeah, let's ask Siri. I don't have an iPhone, so how would I know? Uh, and Siri will tell us some things about these popular players. First up, Melvin Gordon. Yeah. Unfortunate injury. Having a pretty awesome season. Scoring what pretty awesome. feels like every week. Every week. Fantasy owners definitely counting on him. So this was a situation. So obviously he was questionable before the game. Played. Is doing great. Comes out. They run this. It, it was such, I almost in a way feel bad. For for the Chargers coaches, because there's a lot of people running with the narrative, right? We like our angles here. Hit them, hit them, hit them angles. And people are running with the, he shouldn't have been playing in the first place. They could have beaten the Cardinals without him. And then you're way up and you run up. And it wasn't, I didn't like the play call, that weird reverse that mm-hmm. he got hurt on. But but the but fact, it's football. But and also like his other leg got hurt. Right. It wasn't the hurt leg. Yeah. And it was all because of a hit. A guy didn't block properly. This shouldn't be playing because it's the Cardinals. Up. They just lost to the Broncos. They lost to the Broncos at home the week before at home. Right. They're fighting for a division. Yeah, you, you can't. They're it, not the Patriots. You don't just bench people because it's, it's a scrimmage. Patriots, Come on. But no, I mean, it's so easy for people like us. Like, they'd win anyway. And the, what was the score when you got hurt? I mean, they were well ahead. Yeah. It was like 28-10 or something mm-hmm. like that. But the point is, it's like, it's easy to say, and then we'll see enough. Like, when the Lions beat the Rams this week, and you'll look like an idiot. Is that a guarantee? It's not a guarantee. <laughs> okay. But but now the point is this. It's like, it was a, fl- I mean, it was a fluky injury. It's I, football. Right. We're all day to day. This wasn't because he tried to play hurt. Right. Or anything like that. But point is, he is hurt. Yeah, that sucks. MCL sprain, probably out, I would guess, at least two weeks. Yep. We'll see. Probably more, maybe more. I don't know. Out this week. That's the bottom line. So now we got Austin Eckler, and we have Justin Jackson, the rookie, taking over. And to me, Jackson's, it's almost like I know what Eckler's going to do, I feel like, but Jackson's the interesting one. Yeah, he hit, went for seven for 57 yards last week. Right. Facing, like, the, one of the worst run defense in the league. That's fine. But now we got but, the prime timer in Pittsburgh. Right, but in general, the next couple, but I mean, got Baltimore, Fantasy Super Bowl week. Right. But Tough. Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, Kansas City. Yeah, you love those middle I'm not, two. I'm not, yeah, and I'm not that scared of Pittsburgh. Well, it's when you look at their numbers, like for the season, they're pretty low in fantasy points allowed to running backs, but they've allowed at least one rushing touchdown to a back, I think, all but one of the last like six or seven Because games. in general, their games are fairly shootouty. So they can be. There's possessions, there's not yards. The past couple weeks. There's yards yeah. to be gained there, there's touchdowns to right. be had. So and I'm they, not super scared. They've allowed good, you know, Philip Lindsay tore him up last week. Fournette, I mean, it took Fournette a lot of carries, but he did well against is always before. good for a pick that Obviously. puts someone in scoring position. It's kind of his thing now. So I kind of think both can do well in this game, like kind of quietly. They both look good. Watching that game, they both looked well. Jackson was really hyped coming quick into the and year, fast and, and then you know, because he's not like huge, like he's six feet, two hundred pounds. He's not like huge, bruising back, but obviously he's bigger than Eckler. You would think he'd get more goal line carries, but the Chargers are weird about that. Like they used to give Danny Woodhead carries from the one, but even even Gordon, I feel like never scores from the one. It's always like. An eight-yard touchdown run, or so. I have no yeah. facts to back that no, up. Why would you? But I feel like they don't score. No they're not a one-yard scoring team. It's ask, not in their offense. Ask Siri that, or, or Surrey. <laughs> Get them both on the horn. Uh, but yeah, so I like both. I mean, I think they're both have value. Like again, this week will be a tough week, and uh, and and then the next two weeks look great. Yeah, for them. So definite, you know, obviously guys to own, use waiver claims on. Eckler was owned already in like 70% of leagues, but I think Jackson is even worth it too. So now moving on to your boy, Leonard Fournette, uh, fighting old Sugar Ray Leonard. Like, he, what, Sugar he, Ray. Like this guy, and this probably means nothing, like in the grand scheme of things, but I feel like because he missed whatever, six games, however many it was, he should have been less likely to fight because he should have wanted to actually like stay on the field and knock. He should be so happy to just be playing and I don't think in a competitive. In, in my mind, that's how it was working. Like you, idiot. Well, yeah, in your mind, you yeah. missed you missed half the season. Now you're getting kicked out of an easy matchup, and you're going to be suspended <laughs> in next week. Your mind, week. you think of the matchup right. too. I love that. <laughs> and you're going to get kicked out. You, you get suspended for this week. Right. You're just a putz. 
Just, I, I think we I'm, can, I'm done with him. I'm done with him. My season's wow. over. My season's over. So I'm done with this guy. I'm so happy to not watch Jacksonville games anymore. Are you uh, Bold, Bold City? City? Bold City. You're not going to go down to Bold City? Bunch of chumps on it's that a, team, man. It's a scant eight-hour drive from here. How far <laughs> not, is it? Uh, it's like six. Six. Six, six right. and a half. Scant. Still not going. Yeah. But, uh... It's bold. Apparently, why, why did we find out it was called Bold City? When do we get to fully get into this? Do it now. Right. I don't care. We found we out time. that it was called the Bold City of the South right. at some point. Yeah. But uh, we don't really Evans. know why. It was. It's also called the River City. Right. The Bold New City of the South. Like every city. Where Florida the begins. Yeah, see that Maybe you have to be bold to like go to Florida. I don't think you do. <laughs> Pass through Jacksonville. Well, old, drop the B. Right. Old people go to Florida. Right. So should be old city? That'd be more like Miami. And that's or, Boca Raton. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. But uh, the bottom line is this. Well, I think they threw it's those sweatshirts name. on and they were just ready to punch someone in the mouth. That must have been and it. And that someone was... So I think well. they're there. I mean, I so I I think you and I might have been on the same page with that game last week. We thought it was a mail-in game. The Jags season's basically mm-hmm. done. Going up to cold weather Buffalo, feels like they're mailing it in. It kind of feels like Fournette was looking for a reason to get tossed. He's like, I scored my two touchdowns. I don't know, but the point. But the bottom line is now their season's really done. Yeah, they're benching Blake Bortles. Yeah, we're playing Cody Kessler. Yeah. By the way, Cody Kessler. Uh, I don't know. I had a. I remembered him as being a guy who turned it over a lot. Well, he doesn't. And he really didn't. Uh, well, he, but he took a ton of sacks. He doesn't have a strong arm. Yeah, I remember him being a dinker and a dunker. Yeah, he is a little dink dunk. <laughs> but I was like, for some reason, when I looked up the stats. I was like, oh, this is this is going to be one of those fifteen interception, three touchdowns, and eight games, guys. It really wasn't that bad. Like a Nathan but, Peterman type. <laughs> right. It wasn't that bad at all. But yeah, you got to like the Colts defense. You got to like. Uh, or not like other Jaguars offensive players in this one. Yeah. But that's the question. Yeah, I mean, Hyde had 10 carries last week. Right. Some of those, so Carlos Hyde's still a starter. Yeah, I think has so. Has to be. Some of those carries were with Fournette in the game still. Right. Uh, probably like him more than Yeldon. But Yeldon's going to probably do better in PPR. And, and the Colts allow the second most receptions per game to running backs. But, yeah. you know. The Colts th- at this point are scoring, right? right. So, so game script could, be could up favor down. Yeldon. But, yeah, it does feel like old Bold City's given up a bit. This could be a weird game like Bold that. Bold City. And, uh, I, don't, I don't, one more thing, I don't get why football, I get that football players get, like, they're intense and they get, like, mad at each other and it's physical, but I don't get why they want to fight someone with a helmet and pads on. Right. Like, what is that going to do? You're going to break your hand. Yeah, you you're going to get helmet. hurt. You got to get under At least it, in baseball when people charge the mound. Yeah. It's bare fists and faces. And they, yeah, because they even throw their helmets yeah, off. Yeah, they're and like, we hockey, don't, I don't need they this. Try to get them in off. football, it's, oh, it's so stupid. Yeah. Well, man, they're excitable. Buffalo's an excitable place. Bold city, man. Bold city, man. They get bold. So, yeah, I think Yeldon and Hyde can be played this week. Obviously, Hyde, I think, is a much better play. Mm-hmm. Yeldon, I don't know, full full slate, no buys. You really need to play him, like you said, maybe PPR, but even then I'm not super excited. But the matchup is a good one for that at least. So, yeah, but Fournette will be back in week 14. Can't, can't wait. For your consolation. I'm sure all the Fournette owners out there are in the playoffs. <laughs> That's the thing, right? That's not going to help. People might have traded for him. Though. Somehow I had a worse season with Fournette than someone did with Le'Veon Bell as their first well, round pick. I had a worse season with Antonio Brown than that person. I've had a worse <laughs> season than both of us. I've had a worse season than someone who made one roster move all year in our league. One. How is Fournette a worse first round pick than Le'Veon Bell? Uh, it's, it's, it is nice to just be able to not have to worry about yes. a guy. And that person didn't even have Connor. No. God. I hate fantasy, fantasy football. Fantasy football. All right. We already mentioned uh, Blunt and Riddick. We talked about them. Carry on Johnson. Obviously, you're holding on to him. He's another one of the highest trending guys. You're keeping him around just because we don't know what's going to happen with him when or if he's going to come back. And they do have those great matchups. Yep. But uh, I mean, their season might be over. They might. Either their season is they, over. Well, yeah, but they might they might hold him back. They might sit right. out. That's what I'm saying. Like, you got a rookie back like that. But I mean, you're right in that he's going to want to play. It's also new coach. If he's new- not that hurt. It's new coach, right. so they might look at it like we got to keep continue to get better for next year, right? Stuff. It's like good that. to get those so, reps yeah. with the guys who are going to be here. But, Pass uh, blocking, 
Oh, got to work on that. <laughs> on pass pro. Your running backs can't block like an all pro left tackle. <laughs> they don't deserve to be on the field. But yeah, so just in case anyone's thinking like, oh, I should drop them at this point until we get an IR. Because like we're at that point in the year, right, where teams are just putting dudes on IR. Right. Lions did it with Marvin Jones, Andy Dalton. So I would have a, I would bet if they kind of have an inkling he might not play, they'll just put him on IR. Yeah. And they'll bring someone else, basically audition you know, him that, next that's year. That's the thing with Riddick. Like, I know Jones has been out. Um, the last couple of weeks, or whatever, but with Tate gone, with Jones gone, I mean, I know your boy Bruce Allen. Yeah, in talk there, about him later. But you know, there are some slot receptions available be. for Riddick, there so should he be. should be a part of the offense. And they forward. they went back on Thanksgiving to looking for him like inside the ten, like they used they did yeah. a couple years ago, and and because on the one on the pick in the end zone, they were looking for him. I'm pretty sure it was that play, and. uh you know, so he can be a weapon for sure, but I, I don't know. At this point, I feel like he's more. We like the idea of. Riddick yeah, I mean, you probably want to start him if you really are hurting at running back. Yeah, I don't. I don't think in standard you can start him. PPR maybe sure. All right, AJ Green, old Juice Green, another guy who's popular on. People are asking Suri about a lot this week, and uh, <laughs> what's Suri have to say? Oh man, Suri just put a put a nickel in in Suri, and you don't know what's going to happen, but. He says he's going to play this week. You really don't get how iPhones work, do you? <laughs> Put a nickel. No. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't understand technology. <laughs> but, uh, you mean, you saw me with technology earlier when I was trying to get an Ethernet cord in the back. <laughs> that was really embarrassing for you. I don't know what. I mean, it's not like I have trouble with that in general. It was that I'm so worried about, like, breakings because I've broken three work laptops already. You're so strong. N- well, maybe. I don't know. But I, I'm so like sensitive around the work laptop for breaking it and doing something that's going to ruin it. I was trying to be, yeah, but it was really bad when I was like, he, come on, try it. And you were like, okay. <laughs> pull, pull the cord yeah. out and I was like, oh. For those who weren't here. I mean, everyone? Matt, 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 <laughs> those who weren't Matt here. couldn't get the Ethernet cord out of his laptop. Right. And he asked me to do it and I just took yeah, it out. Yeah, it was really, it was It, it was, was awkward bad. for both of us. It was a bad us. look. I'm not going to lie. But anyway, so. Juice uh, Green. Juice Green. He says he's going to be back. Good. Great. There's a guy. Why would you bring him back? Well, yeah. Why would you bring him back? Dalton's out. Well, they're still in the playoff hunt. Like, they're still realistically yeah. on a shot at the playoffs. But, the, yeah, that's the big thing. He comes back, but no Andy Dalton. So now we're down to Jeff Driscoll, and I think, obviously, the, the gut reaction is, well, he's he's not good. Right. How could he be? He went he, 17 for 29 last week, but for not a lot of yards. And, but, and garbage time, right? Right. And, well, and, but I counter your garbage time okay. argument with these backups, when they come in mid-game, yeah. they didn't practice all week. Right. But now you got a week of practice. You can prep right. them a little bit more. Very true. But then defense is prep for them. Oh, defenses. I mean, they I'm sure they've got the book on well, Jeff Driscoll. I mean, the thing is with him, right, is he is mobile. Yeah. He does run a lot. So there is a little bit of a whatever. But, yeah, so I think that's the gut reaction is, oh, so this ain't even that great. He might not be 100%. He's got a bad quarterback. You know, not an easy matchup. The Broncos – They've kind of alternated giving up big games to wide receiver twos and wide receiver ones. Obviously, we saw last week Juju with the huge touchdown. Brown had a decent game against him, but not great. I'm not overly scared of Denver. The matchups in general in the next four are pretty good. Denver, right. Chargers, Oakland, and Cleveland. Yeah. I'm not really too scared of any of those. Right. Yeah. A couple of those statistically are like, oh, they're pretty good. But again, they're not like lights out. What I'd be worried about, I think that Green or... Boyd right. can still get theirs. I'd be worried about both getting that's theirs. And that's the thing. I don't know if this guy can support two. Like, I can't like imagine. Like the great red, red rocket. Right. And, uh, and look, Boyd's been awesome. And a lot of targets. And he was good when A.J. Green was playing earlier. But that is the question is, can they both coexist with Jeff Driscoll? Now, did, was Driscoll and Boyd, like, was it one of those situations where, like, last year they were Maybe. on the second team together? So Might they got been. a bit of a rapport. Mm-hmm. Can we see that angle? No, no. <laughs> but it's also uh, but John Ross who keeps scoring. Okay. By the way, I love John Ross because like every week it's like this guy home run, new you know Deshaun Jackson playmaker, and then every week it's like three yard touchdown, <laughs> John Ross. Like what? Uh, so I mean, he definitely can't support three, right? I wouldn't think so. 
So it's got to be Green. It's got to be Boyd. I think if you have to pick between the two, you just default to AJ Green. You default to the star. Sure, but you probably don't have both, so you're probably right. But starting yeah, either one sort of in general. Best. But then the question is, you can't really bench Boyd well, just based on his production. That's what I'm saying. It's not about you have both. It's just if you have Boyd, then in your mind you default to well, Green's going to be the better guy. Boyd won't. Tough to I set him. Sit him. Tough to set him with how productive he's been, especially with Green coming off injury. Yeah, what if Green leaves? But the you first can't. Quarter? You can't bench Green if you have him in any, any place. Can't do it. It's impossible. So to why do. are we even talking about it? Physically impossible. Well, let, I like talking yeah, this out. Talk it through. Maybe you we're should. just leaving fish to water. Maybe you should bench Tyler Boyd. We're not leaving week. fish to water. We're leading. Yeah, the fish are the fish good are with in the, the water. water. You we're lead leading. a horse to water. Okay. Are we leading? We can teach someone how to fish. You can. We're not in a fish form. <laughs> we don't good. give them a fish. You don't give them a fish. So then they teach. eat for a day. Yeah. How does it go, though, for real? <laughs> <laughs> teach them. Give a man a fish, eats for a day. Teach a man to fish, eats for a lifetime. That's what I wanted to yeah. say. And then you can lead a horse to water. And I'm going to lead water. the horse to water, too. And that's a bird of a different feather. Why are we leading the horse to water? Just because he's thirsty? Just he needs yeah, water? Yeah, they have to drink water right. to live. But why do we need to lead them there? Because <laughs> they don't get there themselves. Horses are pretty smart. No. Uh, so that's how that works. She asked Surrey that one. You got an iPhone. And uh, so, yeah, I don't know what to do, but uh, I'd be worried about all those guys, honestly. Yeah. Any but again, you kind of got to start. I wouldn't feel great. I don't think you have to start Boyd. Hmm. But it's dicey. Yeah, I get it. All right. And what about Mixon then? What about Mixon? <laughs> yeah, yeah, start Mixon. But like, how do you feel about him with without Dalton there? Care more Same. more Mixon? Same nine people in the box against Mixon. What do you think? Nine people. Like Andy <laughs> Dalton was commanding that, or uh, yeah. All that coverage. No, I mean, I feel the same about him. Cool. Nothing Wait changes. Way to, be. <laughs> Way to be interesting. Boring. <laughs> All right, Baker Mayfield, Lamar Jackson. We're going to group them in, in, into one here for uh, both Heisman winners. Mm-hmm. Uh, into the into the last person who's very popular on on Siri. I'm so conscious now <laughs> saying Siri. Uh, so obviously Mayfield's been great. Looks good after Hugh and Haley left. Looks great. Little reverse revenge game. Multiple, there. yeah. That was a little, little uh, and then a little, little post game shade thrown. Little at the post game end. shade. A little bit. There is a picture though, of them shaking hands before the game, which I thought, yeah, no one's going to talk about that or show that. It looked very normal. But Baker Mayfield, multiple touchdowns, five straight games, career high four last week. Somehow Jarvis Landry still doesn't produce at all, which I know his owners just drives them absolutely nuts. But he, so here's the thing though, he had great matchups. He's mm-hmm. had great matchups for like six, seven straight mm-hmm. games. Now he's got tough ones. Now he's got Houston. Uh, I know I know the next two. I know the next three are, like, tough. And then he's got Cincinnati again in Week 16, so there's some fantasy championship potential with him. The thing is, with buys being done, right. no, need him. no major – I don't, can't think of any quarterback injuries that would have taken a top, top guy out. Blake Bortles benching. <laughs> like I said, there's no, there's no major quarterback injuries. Right. So I don't know – Who's if you have over? Mayfield, right. who your other quarterback is and why you need to stretch over. to play him. Well, look, we'll get to that in a second because there's some really good quarterbacks with some bad matchups this week. Mm-hmm. But he also has a bad matchup this week. Right. So I just, yeah, you're not playing him this week. Right. You're just not. And uh, and it sucks because he's just playing so well. And, like, there's probably people who just picked him up. And, like, you, anytime, you know, you pick someone up, you're kind of like, well, I picked him up. I want right. to do something with him. But but you did that last week with him. You should have. You did that last week. You should have been up front it. with him and told him it was a one-week thing. You're too late. You don't get attached. Now. You missed it. Don't, don't get attached. You know attached. what? If I get to week 16 and we're still a thing, <laughs> I, might go, I might call on I'm, you again. I'm just saying, you can't. Right. I, hope, I hope you were up front when you picked him up. I hope you were. You got to be honest with people. Now, Lamar Jackson is— My boy. Is getting yeah, you're my boy. boy. L. Jax is getting the basically the schedule Mayfield had. Yeah, this is the the, the AFC North man got to play the NFC South this year. Bring on Atlanta, baby! And that is open season. Bring on Atlanta. So obviously, still not a good thrower. Sure. I mean, the numbers improved last week. They let him throw more. Right. I mean, a 74-yard completion to a tight end inflated those numbers quite a bit. Yeah, but he— But it happened. It happened? It happened. He and to free. recap from last week, just to close close the book on that, we were debating Lamar Jackson versus right. Roethlisberger. And I'm, I mocked you heavily for even— Right. They ended up scoring— Almost the exact amount, but they both had 22 point something points. In in a six point passing touchdown. Yes. In yeah, a six point passing. Four point Jackson would have been better because right. one of his. So 
And and they couldn't have had two more different games. No. And they still ended up 22 apiece. Right. Now, Roethlisberger should have had eight more points than him, probably, if he didn't throw probably. a bonehead interception at the end. But that's why I didn't want to play Roethlisberger. And, right, I mean, he easily could have had that where Grimble fumbled, right? That yeah. would have been a Roethlisberger and, touchdown. But, and, you know, that's yeah. why, not the Grimble part, but that's why I didn't want to play Roethlisberger because... He puts up a lot of yards, but he's throwing, he's so turnover well, happy. And on the road, especially. And I think the point, the only point that I think that illustrated was was the Lamar Jackson floor. Right. He still got a 70 rushing yards, which granted was inflated by that 30 or 40 yard run at the end of the game, but right. he got his rushing TD and he threw the one passing TD. Mm-hmm. And he still didn't throw, I don't think he threw for 200 yards, right? Uh, I, don't I, don't think, think I think so. he was around 175. Yeah. So it, again, it didn't take a ton. For Lamar to get to 20 points. Right. And Roethlisberger threw for 460 yards. <laughs> right. So it was, it's just funny how those were two completely different right. games and they end up in the same spot. So against Atlanta, I don't know necessarily who you have, but as long as Flacco's out, which it seems like yeah. he is, yeah. fire up Lamar again, man. So, I mean, Atlanta's big thing. The second, second most fantasy points to quarterbacks, and it's because they allow three passing touchdowns mm-hmm. to everyone they face, basically, except NFC East quarterbacks. All four NFC East quarterbacks they face, they've like been awesome against. Right. Really weird. Lamar Jackson's not going to get three passing touchdowns. Probably. I not. feel confident saying. I mean, the thing is, look, that's a bad defense. We all know John Brown can take a slant 70 yards to the house. We know that. We know that. Right. Willie Sneed's overdue. Right. Zero we, targets. We know Crabtree's got a catch radius. And we know he does. For those inaccurate red zone targets. No, he does. But no, uh, the, but he's not going to do that. But again, it, it's. I mean, fifty yards feels like the floor. Don't don't you think if Lamar rushing? Jack, let's say Lamar Jackson gets to the five yard line. Right. Two separate drives, and like in this last game, he was he wasn't even looking to run. Right. right. The, the whole he was just turn around, hand it to Gus Gus the bus. That's right. But don't you feel like when he's inside the ten, he's getting one. Oh, 100%. like he's keeping even if the read says don't keep it. At some point, he's keeping he's running it. Yeah, yeah, he's keeping one. He, he learned exactly, that at Louisville when he was gunning for like stats. Because I would the watch them drive down the field, and he wouldn't even. He would just turn around, literally, yeah. and hand it to God. But they got inside, like, the 10, and it's like, no, I'm kind of doing a read oh, option yeah. now, and now I'm looking to run. And, and he should. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a crazy weapon to have. He right. should do that. So I still feel good about So he's fit, getting one, at for least sure. 50 yards rushing at and least. a TD for sure. That's 11 points. Right there. The thing that can get him is the turnovers. And it's weird. Both of his picks last week were deflections. Now, you right. could argue well, one, they were good one, one of them at least yeah. was not a good pass. Second one was a little bit more unlucky, mm-hmm. but... Yeah, I, uh, my point is it doesn't take much for him to get and, 20. And Atlanta's defense is so bad. Like He can complete passes. He's got good enough receivers. Mm-hmm. He'll get 100 to, to, to 200 passing yards. It really comes down to does he get the second touchdown or mm-hmm. not. Against Atlanta, I think he does. thing is, though, I mean, the worry, I mean, but and this is kind of a worry with everyone, but especially with him, hard hit. Yeah, no, that's tough. And he's knocked that's, out of the game. That's tough. And he's probably going to lose a fumble here at some point too. On a, yeah, well, he's like throwing that. two picks but, a game, but, right? But, but don't you feel like he's got? A, I feel like he's got a three touchdown game in him. Probably. Combined somehow. This is the in, game in a game with a lot of possessions. Right. Maybe some garbage time. Not garbage time, but like comeback yeah. mode. Either way, right? Yeah. Either. Yeah. So where's this game? Is this game on turf? It's on turf. Oh, <laughs> indoors. Turf. Oh, how God. fast he's going to be? Whew. Not far from Louisville. Yeah, Louisville, real close. Atlanta and Louisville. Yeah, that, no, in my mind, those are not that, that far metro away. metroplex. Everyone talks. Well, he's about. from Florida, though. <laughs> so not that far from Florida either. <laughs> right. Gosh, so, state neighbors. Start them. Start Lamar. Yeah, I kind of like. Can this I? Is even is even fun? Is even special? If I guarantee a rushing touchdown from no. him? Okay. No, because I will. The most common thing, and yeah, his next couple matches. But you have are a comparison great. I think is interesting. Tebow. Is I mean, other people made it. It's yeah. he's Tebow in a different way. Yeah. He's fast, Tim Tebow. Yeah, and Tim Tebow's he's you know stronger was bulky Tebow. Lamar Jackson. Yeah, yeah, I guess. And like you, you were saying, like yeah, but Tebow's motion was so jacked so up. bad. So I'm not, I'm not saying he's a much, you know, or uh, I'm not saying Tebow is a better passer, or even equivalent passer. But ultimately, I think the passing results are about the same. And yeah, they ran the ball, and Lamar Jackson's obviously faster. But kind of similar, the way they get their fantasy, when Tebow always found a way that year. Mm-hmm. Just always found a way. Do you think Joe Flacco's out of a job? Mm-hmm. They're be, being weird about it. They're being a little too weird. I just like, I hope that we get an alternating possession. <laughs> That's just awful. That would be great. All right. 
enough with Siri. We'll leave her alone. We'll leave it alone for the time being and uh, focus on the good and the bad matchups for some this week. Not starts and sits, not sleep This is bus. where we lead the horse to water, I think. This is where we teach the fish how to herd horses oh because it is time just to look at the numbers and talk out loud and whatever people mm-hmm. want to do with it mm-hmm. up to them quarterbacks good matchups case keenum has the best matchup gunslinger one can have in cincinnati Dak prescott good one on paper against new orleans although they've been much better lately we all know that mm-hmm. back-to-back thursday games for both teams That's yeah weird yeah james winston against carolina panthers jimmy smokes Correct. Derek Carr, remember him? Pass. Against the Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> Pass. And Matthew Stafford of the come- of the upset-minded how many, Lions. How many pick sixes for Stafford this week? I don't know, man. I thought we were past that with him. Nah, this I thought is, we were done with nah, the pick six He throws Stafford. one this week. Man, the Rams aren't good, though. All right. The Bats. We already mentioned Mayfield. Aaron Rodgers. Nah. Against the Arizona Cardinals. And touchdown Tom Brady. <laughs> Against the Minnesota Vikings. Both of them are at home, though. So I guess the first question is, of the five guys... You had a third one on there. Your boy Baker Mayfield. Mayfield. Yeah, Yeah. I said. Mayfield's got a tough one. Uh, The five good I mentioned. Yep. Keenum, Prescott, Winston, Carr, Stafford. Yep. Are you playing any over Rodgers or Brady? Not Rodgers. So you're Rodgers, you're just... He's in. 100%. Has to be I in. know. I've said it before. He's not involved in silly season this year. No. But he still gets his 200. It's two- a very serious season for Aaron <laughs> Rodgers. It's uh, not silly. About 250 yards and two TDs every week. Right. But it's Aaron Rodgers. I'm not not sorry. At home. At home. Arizona just got torched by Rivers. Correct. Okay. I'm not worried. About it. Am I expecting four TDs from Rodgers? Am I expecting a Pat Mahomes game from mm-hmm. Rodgers? No, never. I learned that like week Aaron two. Aaron Rodgers is no Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> I learned we that all like, agree on like that. week two, what to expect from Rodgers. But I know he's not going to turn the ball over, and I'm pretty sure he's going to throw two TDs. Okay. Um, That's good enough for you? It's good enough to not take risk against... With Case Keenum? With the, Keenum's the only guy... So I have him ranked. <clears throat> I ranked him Keenum one, Winston two, Prescott three, Stafford four and Carr thirty six. Come on, <laughs> boo. Um, so Keenum's the catch. Old- it, that's gonna be garbage time mode central, man. But I'm not. I'm just not benching Rogers. Carr to Aitman. So, Do you want some of that? If, if we want to talk Brady, I'm no. up for that. But I'm not benching Rogers. This Rogers. is sacrilegious. I not. feel like from. Uh, from the Billy Boston is, over here's here. Here's the thing. Well, first of all, I do think Minnesota could be a potential bit of a letdown game. For who? For Minnesota. Okay. Uh, How do you, let, you can't let down against the Patriots. Ah, uh, go on the road. No, not against the Pat. Letdown games are when you after play a Bold big, City. After a big divisional win. Yeah. On Sunday night against the Packers. When you're looking across the field and two goats but, are over but, there. I'll say three, this. Three goats. Three we'll goats? Go, Grog. Do, we, do goats need to be led to water? <laughs> yes. <laughs> now goats eat anything. But when, yeah, you look across the field, you see three all-time greats. At, yeah. at least two. Yeah. Two. Well, I don't give Gronk that yet. But uh, Gronk's Tony an Gonzalez. all-time great. Well, an all-time great, but not the, not the goat. Okay. That's still probably Tony Gonzalez. But when you look at when you look across the field, like you don't get you don't let down. You don't let down. But when you wait, see those all, banners, oh, those banners, they're so nice. Yeah, you see Teddy Bruschi. I um, assume he's there. Yeah, he'll be there. Yeah. Uh, here's the thing with the Patriots. This is why I think you can definitely bench Brady. They seem like they're just doing kind of enough to win. They're running the ball a lot. They're not high scoring really anymore. No, I guess they're they, not. They maybe get to 27, but they're just not. They're not winging it around everywhere. But Xavier Rhodes probably not going to play. Yeah. Right? Got a little helps. hammy. That helps a little, but I don't know. What are you going to It's funny because Brady would probably get you 250 and two. Yeah, it will. I don't but, think with, but with Rodgers, I'm like, ah, no, nah, you got to start I Rogers. know. I don't get Yeah, the logic to me is the exact same for both. Do, I mean, do you want to start any of these guys over these guys, over them? Uh, no. It feels bad, but I mean, Winston always gets stats. Well, always. that's the funny thing. Always. I have Keenum one out of those guys, right. but Winston, if you can put up with the and two. And Keenum usually <laughs> doesn't get stats two, no matter what. The two so, picks. Like Winston, Winston's going to throw two TDs too. Oh, at least. Yeah. At least. And it's, you know, Panthers now are up to fifth in quarterback points allowed. You know, obviously Ryan Fitzpatrick, when they played in week nine, he had four touchdowns against them. Yeah, their defense isn't special. 
Not at all. And so it's like, to me, you know, you have Keenum one and I get it because of the matchup, but I just look at him as a guy. I'm like, I can't take, I mean, the Bengals are bad, but I'm just like, I can't, no, I'm taking, I'm taking Winston and Stafford over, over him. And then I'm probably taking Prescott because the Saints defense has been better. I'm not interested in Stafford too much. I mean, he's, he's got no chocolate. weapons. He's I mean, not great. Rams are good. Your boy Riddick. Galladay's really good. Galladay's good. Ellington's legit as a slot guy. Yeah, does he have that second home run guy? No. You're going to start those guys over Brady and Rodgers? Probably not. I mean, I think Winston, Didn't you learn though, your lesson last week with Gronk? You all wanted, you wanted to bench Gronk. I didn't want to bench Gronk. Like, you don't bench Gronk because I, Gronk can no, always do I something. I want to bench Gronk. I just said... You can consider benching Brock. Okay, well, we can consider anything. Right. But and I think you can consider benching him again this week, and too, And he popped frankly. off a TD against one of the Great. best teams against tight ends. Great. The Jets, they weren't that good. They are. They give up six points a week to tight ends. Yeah, probably more. We, but the <laughs> point is this. <laughs> These are facts. But Winston, though, that's the guy I would really look at. Because he, I mean, Winston's like almost the definition of silly season. He just does stupid, weird oh, crap. It's like four TDs and two picks a week. Yeah. So, I will say this, though, about Bray or Rodgers. Statistically, Arizona looks good, but, yeah, we all saw what Rivers did to him last week, and this is a team, again, another team with more incentive to lose than win, a team that really, what are they doing? It's December. They want to get the season over with. Another is Arizona going to Green Bay? Yes. Another road game. You're there? going up cold weather. I think they want But the thing there? is, this could be just like an Aaron Jones runs all over him could. game. Roger's going to have to get his early. Um, you know, and he's talking about no weapons. That guy's got one. Like, he doesn't even have. We're out on MVS? I'm not totally out, but, I mean, if we're going to just poo-poo the Lions guys, we got to poo-poo him. Like, he's got Jimmy Graham played with a broken th- thumb. MVS is better than the secondary Lions guys. MVS is better, better than, than Bruce, Bruce Ellington? Ellington? Come on. I guess. Come on. I mean, I guess. Bruce Ellington, you know, he's going to catch it if you throw to him. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I'm going to catch it if you throw it to me. No, you're not. You should sure break am. your hand. You should have seen me Thanksgiving morning. You tried morning. to catch a pass from an NFL quarterback. <laughs> you just break your hand. You're just, bones would shatter Come on, man, You should hand. have seen me at 10 a.m. Thanksgiving morning. All right. Well, the bottom line is, yeah, so those good ones, but you're right about, like, bye weeks are over. There's no huge injuries. Like, you should have starters better than trying to take a chance. At this point in the season, I think you need to – increase your floor and not take so many chances. Depends who you're playing, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So those are quarterbacks, running backs, the good matchups, Sean McCoy, Shady, who's been another one of his thorns in your side, playing yeah. the Dolphins. The Dolphins guys, the underappreciated Frank Gore, who still unowned in 75% of <laughs> Yahoo League somehow, and then Kenyon Drake, assuming he plays against Buffalo, is a nice matchup. The Bears running by Jordan Howard. You talk about someone fantasy owners hate. Tariq Cohen at the Giants. And then I, I threw Royce Freeman on here. Yeah, I thought that was a bit of an odd one. Well, yeah, we'll get into that against Cincinnati. The bad matchups, Falcons guys, we'll just say Tevin Coleman because Ito seems to be kind of uninteresting against Baltimore. Did you uh, say Ito's been sentenced to the bench? Good one. And uh, <laughs> and then the Colts guys, we don't know if Mac's going to play yet. But whoever's playing for the Colts at Jacksonville, at Bold City, then Mark Ingram at Dallas. It's kind of a tough one. And then I already mentioned Peyton Barber against Carolina. So the reason I put Freeman on here is because he still gets about six, seven carries a game. And this is a great matchup. Cincinnati, one of the very worst run defense. I mean, Lindsay's clearly the lead. I can't back. believe Lindsay's like still going and it's been this and just awesome lockdown and just talks yeah. all kinds of shit and on the field. He's great. It's just like the amount of like, 10-yard runs that yeah. I feel like he gets. Big plays. Yeah. So, but Freeman is still, like, involved. Like, there's yeah. sometimes we see, like, you know, Jamal Williams, and he barely touches the ball right. anymore. So, against Cincinnati, it, let's say he gets 10 carries. I, I feel like it's he's not enough to play as a flex. I feel like he's pretty touchdown dependent. He uh, is. It's funny. I have him in a PPR league, and I, that's also the league I have, like, Deion Lewis. Mm-hmm. And... I consider playing Deion Lewis in my flex like every week, depending right. on my wide receiver matchups. I haven't considered playing Freeman right. in weeks. Like, I don't even. Right. He might pop in a touchdown. He may have his 50 yard game, but he's so far off my radar. Right. But this would be the week. I guess, yeah. I mean, on the road, I don't know if you can necessarily, right. necessarily say they're going to be like winning and running right. clock or anything. Well, you love Case Keenum so much. I do. Yeah. Well, I don't. You put him on the no, list and I do. Sure. Uh, I don't know. You got to be really hurting to play Freeman. I feel like. What? I mean, what do you think? 
See, I feel like he will do well this week, but again, so let's... Well, let's Where just, do you have him in the rankings? Not just uh, these guys, in the rankings. I think he's around, like, mid-30s. <sighs> that's pretty deep to be playing. Well, that's the flex, yeah. right? I mean, yeah, kind of. Obviously, receivers factor in, too, but that's right in a flex spot around there. So let's look at... Well, let's look at the balance. So Mark Ingram, bad match on paper... Disappointed in a great matchup last week, but like you, you just have to play. Yeah, it's not. I don't think it's that terrible. You know, I, I feel the Saints are matchup proof too. Well, yeah, the thing, the problem with the Saints is you don't know who's going to score every week. Yeah, but it can just as easily be Ingram as it is, Kamara. and it can be on a big play. It can be on a yeah. short play. It can be on a pass. It can be on a run. So I'm not that. I mean, you might be disappointed with him. Yeah, but but uh, it's almost like you just have to live with that. Yeah, and I don't. And that's not like a stifling matchup against Dallas. I mean, statistically, they're really good against back. I mean, they're kind of good against everyone. But, but New Orleans is going to move the ball. Yeah, that's just it. That's not that's not a worry. So then let's look at Peyton Barber. Yeah, see that? Who's been doing well lately, gets a ton of carries. Yeah, Carolina's not that special on D. And they're like, yeah, 24th against running backs. But I don't I don't love Barber. Okay, so you play Royce Freeman ahead of him then. <sighs> and keep coming back. This is the Royce Freeman line. Man, that's tough. Starter versus backup. Right. Uh, that's just it. And it feels dumb, but then you're like, yeah. But I think I go Barber. I think I might go Barber. Okay. Uh, Tevin Coleman. Little bit of a sharing carries, even yeah, though Yeah, no, I feel like I got to play. I know Baltimore has got a good D, but it is at home. I think I got to play Coleman okay. over, over See, Freeman think, and Barber. I think I'd Michael Freeman over, over Coleman. But Coleman does well in the passing game, too. He, does. he can pop one in from 20 yards out. Co- Coleman's one of these guys, I think every time I pick against him, he scores. Like, yeah, some I'd, I'd be okay with, with All right, well, what about, let's say Mac is out. Okay. And and Naheem Hines. Like, I mean, I think a lot of people think they're going to split between Wilkins and Hines. Probably. Last time we saw no Mac, though, Hines got 22 touches. He got 15 carries, 22 total touches. <laughs> yeah, but— That w- was a while ago. Wilkins played a fair amount on yeah. Sunday, though. So right. I think it'll be— Right. Splitsville. So Freeman goes over both them, in your mind, then? Hines in a PPR. Okay. Hines in a PPR, I'd take. Um— yeah, Freeman over both of them. All right. So Shady, you own him. I mean, I think you have to start him with no Fournette, but I mean, is that Yeah, Miami's run D isn't yeah. special. So you um, oh no, it's it's a good matchup. Yeah, yeah. I mean Mac so was running you, on them last week. Are you expecting like a big game? Like he's not bad. like that game against the Jets, but right. it's as good as you're gonna get from McCoy. Right. What sucks there, it's not even McCoy. I feel like it will it's Josh Allen running a mm. lot. But I saw McCoy off the field a bunch. <laughs> And I don't know if that was, like, by design. I don't know if he was tired. I, I don't know what the deal was with that. But it was, like, they were in a game against Jacksonville where he should have gotten normal game script right. carries, whatever, and he's not in the game. Yeah. But I think against Miami, Old. I think against Miami, it's a good matchup. Yeah, it's a great matchup. He should be the guy. It should be in lineups. Yeah. A lot of people I, I'm okay with McCoy. Like I have, so, out, out, of your, out of your good backs, yeah. I have him as one. Yeah. Mostly because he's sure. not really splitting. Right. So then— I have the Bears next. Jordan Howard. It's more like Cohen, to be yeah, honest. But, I mean, Howard runs more. Yeah. Or he should. I got the Bears ahead of the Dolphins. Okay. Just because I feel like the Bears have more like, chance. Well, Frank Gore, you know, is getting those carries. But, you know, they don't have rushing touchdowns. I think they have right. two rushing touchdowns all year. Well, they're the, due. The Dolphins is a team. They're due. Um, so I like the Bears guys both right. over the Dolphins over guys. Over 15 carry Frank Gore. Yeah, well, it's probably going to be 15 carry Jordan Howard. Maybe. That's what's been so frustrating. I feel like the Bears him. have more of a chance to be on the one and pop one in. Right. Than the Dolphins Road do. game, though, for the Bears. Yeah. Uh, and work? then I got the Dolphins after them. Okay. And then I have Freeman. I have Freeman behind all of these people, actually. Wow. Like, I'd start both. Kenyon Drake? I'd start both Dolphins over Freeman. I'd start both Bears over Freeman. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I probably would, And I'd do. start McCoy, obviously, over Freeman. Yeah. No, I agree with you there. But I think, I think all of the... Six guys we mentioned, both Bears, both Dolphins, McCoy, Freeman, are worth starting if you start three backs. You know, if you yeah. start a, a back and a flex. Uh, all pretty good this week. L- guys I think some people really hate. Jordan Howard, people hate him. McCoy, I think, you know, we ju- we, we always talk about a Frank Gore just isn't owned, which is insane. <laughs> hilarious. I don't even know why we talk about him every week. I, yeah. So no one's worried about starting We're trying to get people to start. But, and, but then to be fair, he doesn't do so much. He's so. up to, is he fourth all time in rushing? Yeah, yeah. And this guy had like Barry Sanders. knee yeah. problems and people were scared. I remember I wanted the Patriots to draft him mm-hmm. so bad. I think he went in the fourth round and 
Yeah, it's like remember, second, yeah. third round. I was like, oh my, just take Gore, just yeah. take Gore, and no one took him. And it was his knee and all this, and yeah. fourth leading rush of all time. Beast, man, be super underrated. Him and Curtis Martin. Uh, so wide receivers, good matchups. Redskins guys at the Eagles. Feel like you really mailed this one in. Lots of teams. What? Well, lots of wide but receiver. But that's because they don't have breakout guys. I put Bruce Ellington by name on yeah, there. He's the only one. Uh, but the Jets guys at Tennessee, good match on paper. The Ravens guys at Atlanta, we kind of already talked about them. The Seahawks guys play in San Francisco. And the Eagles, I mean, we'll, we'll assume Alshon Jeffrey's a must start, but I think that one's more about Golden Tate because he hasn't done much. <clears throat> He's getting eight targets a game. So those are good, bad Patriots guys playing the Vikings. Uh, Calvin Ridley playing Baltimore. And uh, the Browns receivers playing Houston. So start with the good. I think with the Redskins... Josh Doxson is the number one wide receiver. Seems that way. But yeah, this is Trey Quinn's coming up out of nowhere, making kind of quietly, you know. Stealing my Jordan Reed touchdowns. Yeah, Eagles are up to second most fantasy points allowed to wide receivers. Seems crazy to me. Really does. So, yeah, Colt McCoy's in there, but he threw to Doxson a lot. And it seems like he likes Jordan Reed more. I don't know, but this feels like a good game for Doxson. Like, I, he was my preseason sleeper. I'm not giving up on him. I want him to do well to finish the season. Feels like this is a spot he should Well, they got to throw someone, right? And yeah. it's at Philly. It's a huge game. Yeah, it's, it's a, a huge game. It's a big game. Especially if the Cowboys lose Thursday night. Um, but if we assume Philly's going to move the ball a bit and score, mm-hmm. Redson's going to have to score. They're not going to be able to just hand it to Peterson every every down. So they have to throw someone. Sure, why not Doxson? Yeah, I can, I like him this week. Yeah. Like I think I like him. Like I think we have him ranked in like the over Trey mid Quinn, low twenty. Well, well over Trey Quinn because he hasn't proven it. But Trey Quinn just eh, someone to watch. All right, talk about Ellington. Twelve catches, sixteen targets in his first two games with the Lions. Clearly, they're throwing to this guy. It hasn't produced much with those. I think eighty yards, no touchdowns. But hey, look, if we go game script. Your theory: Lions are going to be getting blown mm-hmm. out. I mean, he should be real busy in the second half. Right, and he's not going to get, like, benched like potentially Galladay right. will, like, uh, you know, take him out of a blowout. This dude's going to play. Right. He's going to play. Can yeah. he score, though? That's what's tough because it's a lot of short p- patterns. Right. It's a lot of— And where is he on the depth chart of score? Where is he on the red zone depth chart? Four? I mean, they don't throw to a tight end. Yeah. It's Galladay one. Yeah. It's the it's blunt. blunt two. Yeah. And, I mean, he's three or four, yeah. I feel like. Probably behind Riddick. But yeah, I guess. But even that, should, there should be targets there. There should be some yards there. Yeah, so sure. I like him. I mean, obviously better in PPR, way better in PPR. But interesting to sort of flyer and standard. The Jets guy. So Jermaine Curse was the big target guy last week. He had twelve, had a good game. That happened earlier this year, and then he didn't. Anunwa's back. You know, they're throwing to Herndon a lot. Like, can you trust any of those guys? No. Because Tennessee is really bad against wide receivers. Not really. It's weird. Like, Inouye seems to be getting a lot of receptions, but he's not getting any yards. And yeah. I feel like it was opposite to that. Right. When last year or the beginning of this year before he hurt his ankle. Right. So uh, he's probably still hurt. I, I can't trust. The, the jet I can trust, curse. I feel like, is Herndon. Yeah, I guess. And this is a brutal match. T- t- Tennessee's as t- uh, good as anyone against tight ends. So I don't think you just, I just don't think you play. I don't know Jets. what situation your team has to be in to play a Jets receiver. Yeah, I don't think Let's so. Put it that way. Um, Ravens, guys. We already talked about this. So here's the question I think at most one's going to pay off, mm-hmm. but which one? It literally could be any of the three. Sneed ain't scoring. We've talked about this. Well, no. And so he had the eight targets two weeks ago, mm-hmm. and it was like, oh, he only throws to Willie Sneed. Last right. week, zero targets. Right. And I think I said that, too. I was like, I don't think that told us anything. Right. And then— I think it's just so he threw two And then Crabtree time. had, I think, six targets scored. Three catches, 21 yards. John Brown, one target the week before. This week, seven. Team high, but only caught one. Right. He's had under, like, 35 yards in yeah. four out of five games. Like, he's done nothing. Yeah. I, it's got to be Crabtree one. You think so? Brown too. I still like Brown. I still think Brown's more like. Well, to make I a big think play. at some point they're going to run something where Lamar Jackson throws it seventy yards in the air and Brown runs under it, or even just throw it short and Brown breaks it. I don't know. Brown doesn't really do that. I feel he has better chance than Crabtree. Well, yeah, but then Crabtree's better in the red zone. I guess, but I feel like Lamar Jackson's tucking it in the red zone. <laughs> sure is. <laughs> He's just keeping it. Sure is. So I still I, so, go Brown, and I still think Snead—I think we're just always going to be— I, Like, I put Snead back ahead of Crabtree. 
No. Yeah, he's gonna get. I think he's gonna get more targets. No. Why would you put Snead ahead of Crabtree? I mean, why? I don't, on, on what grounds? I think he's gonna get more targets. Well, why? He got zero last week. He got eight the week before. Because he's due. I mean, it's just I, my point is I don't think we can pr- like it's so unpredictable. Right, that you're gonna take to the predict, that you're gonna take the wide receiver three. In I'm gonna scenario. try to predict the unpredictable. because the wide receiver one instead two weeks of the ago. guy with the biggest catch radius for the biggest most for an inaccurate the guy quarterback. Drops the most. That's true too. Yeah, we've got an inaccurate quarterback. Probably is gonna like throw into bigger guys. <laughs> it's probably gonna okay. Inaccurate quarterback is gonna throw to Crabtree. It's gonna be so bad. <laughs> Sneed catches it on There's a deflection. Some really really good angles. I mean, whatever. Flip a coin. What can I do now that my season's over? How can I still root for Lamar Jackson? Can I like make a bet with somebody on what he's going to do this week? Because I feel like there, I need. Yeah, there are betting sites I where you can do that. I need to invest in Lamar you Jackson know that. against Atlanta on turf. Yeah, you're no stranger to making prop bets. I know. I need to find something because <laughs> I need to. I need to somehow be invested in well, his go talk. big game against Atlanta. Talk, talk. Talk big around the office till you get okay. someone who is like, he's not going to do 200. Do we, and then you work backwards. Do we have those people? Uh, we're, oh, we lost we'll find Alex. Yeah. We'll find Alex will poo poo him. But you got to work backwards. So you start with like, he's going to run for 200. Right. And that piques the interest. Right. Okay. And then you gradually you bring it him. down a little. Okay. And then next thing you know, the bet's for 100 okay. yards. When we go back upstairs, let's walk by Alex's, Alex's okay. desk and let's just casually talk about right. Lamar Jackson, see if we can get him a bite on it. Yeah, I think he's top three quarterback in the league. <laughs> and that's how you reel it in. He's not even good kid, bro. And then boom, there you go. All right. So Ravens guys, I I think you, I think if you have any of the three, you can start them. Just knowing that only one's gonna pay off, and well, you might be picking the wrong one. I'm matching John Brown in two right. leagues where my game doesn't. So it's almost so start them all or bench them all. And I don't mean if you literally have all three. I mean, you shouldn't have all three, but... I hope you don't have all three. It's like, start them all or bench them all. Like, you just have to go all in or all out. I guess. See, I don't agree. I don't think Sneed needs to be started at all, but okay. Well, you're dumb. Okay, cool. Why am I even here, then? I don't know. Ah. It's a waste of everyone's time. <laughs> cool. I'm trying to lead you to water, and next thing you know, you're here. All right, Seahawks, guys. <laughs> at home against the Niners. So, Tyler Lockett must start. He's been awesome this year. Sure. Really weird, though. Last week was his first 100-yard game. Like, this was one of those big play guys. Right, well, he was going against me, so, of course, Naturally. he had his biggest game uh, of the year. But, yeah, I mean, touchdown machine, not a super high catch or super high target. He's only had 10 incompletions all, all year thrown to him like targets that he didn't catch that's like michael thomas level 10 so hyper efficient and he still had like the thing i love about him is he still has the big play in his back pocket Mm -hmm. just because he hasn't done it yet i think he keeps it in his front pocket maybe a long catch last week just wasn't in the little in the little pocket for the keys yeah maybe he had a big catch last week he just didn't get in no he makes big plays but i'm saying like the the either the super big play or the two big plays whatever um so he's a must start then it comes down to baldwin or more and we've seen more. So he had three straight games with a touchdown, three straight without. And then last week, 100 yards. Yeah, he was in touchdown. Baldwin last week. Baldwin still doesn't Baldwin seem still healthy. hurt, yeah. But he still had seven targets. Yeah. So this is a good matchup. I think the Seahawks can support two wide receivers in this matchup. Do you like Baldwin or more? I think better? I'd go more. Yeah, it's pretty I'd close. What, Baldwin hasn't done anything. He's probably still hurt. He really hasn't done a lot, no. Um, but I kind of like them. And then the Eagles guys... I mean, look, Jeffrey hasn't done anything for three games. Tate hasn't done anything since he's been there. It's a pretty good matchup on paper. Are you playing again? We mentioned huge game at home. Probably got to play Jeffrey. I don't think you have to play Tate. He's still getting more targets though. Short targets. Yeah, I almost feel like I benched him last week for Curtis Samuel. I was well. That was bold. Bold city, bro. That was bold city. <laughs> Did they play last week? Giants. Uh, uh yeah. yeah. I don't know. That's a tough one to me. I kind of I feel like Tate's got the higher floor. It's probably higher floor than Jeffrey, but I don't yeah. think. But like his higher floor is what getting fifty five yards. yards. It's yeah. not a high number. It's just higher than well, Jeffrey's. No, it's not a hundred, but Jeffrey pops in one touchdown and he's got him beat. Yeah, Tate's due. What about that? That's some top level. What about analysis. that? He's due. Top I don't know. Analysis. I play them both. I'll put it that way. I, I think they're both starters, and this is the week they break out. And I think offense I think you start start Jeffrey for sure. I yeah. think you can debate Tate. Debate Tate. Embrace debate of Tate. All right, bad guy. Uh, bad guys. The bad guys. Patriots. Edelman and Gordon against Minnesota. Tough to sit, Edelman. 
tough to say. Tough to say Gordon. Yeah. I know he hasn't done much, but yeah. he's averaging over eight targets a game over his yeah, last six. Yeah, Rhodes is probably not going to play. Right. Eight targets a game over his last six, a little more. Again, pretty high floor. It just and another guy just feels like yeah you just got to start like I feel like Edelman and Gordon both get sixty yards like, I yeah think and there. if you're gonna do like the hey you got to start Jeffrey like Gordon's the same type of guy to me yeah well you're the one that put him in bad matchups I know well he does have a bad matchup well Gordon I think and he hasn't done a ton so there's probably people who are like why am I starting Josh Gordon every week he's probably safer than Jeffrey to be honest right. So, but it's like there's more competition. Like, I mean, Jeffrey obviously he's number two on his team behind Ertz, really. Mm-hmm. So it's like even if you look at Gronk is like not Gronk, Gronk, but still obviously a red zone threat. And Adelman gets more targets. Like Gordon is right there. Yeah, but all Gordon's catches are long, not like fifty yard, but they're all like it feels that way. They're yeah. all they like, feel like they're fifteen yards. Yeah. So he gets five of those. He's at seventy five yards. Yeah, just one touchdown. Boom, he's fine. So yeah, I'd start both of them. I wouldn't feel great about either, quite frankly. But I would still. I yeah, why does he with three flex? Right. But you don't like Tom Brady, so <laughs> I don't get it. You love Gronk. You I love like the Tom Brady. I like Tom Brady. I mean, you think Brady should be benched for Hoyer? All right. So Ridley. <laughs> yeah. So Ridley's interesting. They're at home. I looked it up. 17 more yards a game at home. He has okay. six touchdowns at home compared to two on the That's road. Right. But weren't they in two games, though? Well, yeah. Is that Saints They're overtime both three shootout. Games, right? well, well, one was three, and I think he had another. Was it three, two, and one, maybe? It was, might have been something like yeah. that. But So, yeah, the home split say, hey, he's better, but I don't know if he is. Baltimore is brutal against wide receivers. We've seen Ridley disappear. Julio knows, knows where the end zone is now. He apparently has found it. Yeah. So I'm shocker. Cal Ridley feels like he could have a good game. Feels like he's super risky too. Yeah, probably. And, and Sanu's hanging around. Probably flex worthy. Barely, I think. Here's the thing, though. As good as Baltimore, let's say, is against wide receivers on defense in general, how many points are they going to hold Atlanta to? Like yeah. this is a bad matchup. That's fine. But if you're going to say bench Coleman, bench Ridley, like do right. you really not think they're going to put find a way to right. get 21? Right. Yeah, they probably will. They're going to get 21 at home against Baltimore. Yeah. Probably. 24, right? right? Like, I don't think it's going to be some 17 14 game. Yeah. So, if that's going to happen. I mean, is Julio getting everything? So, then it comes down is Ridley, you know, would you play Josh Doxson over Ridley? See, I would, but I think most people would say no. Yeah, I probably would stick with Ridley. And, like, I'd play both Tate and Jeffrey over him. I'd um, play Jeffrey over him. Yeah, man, you don't like Tate. I don't get it. Listen, I put my money where my mouth is. I benched him last week. Yeah. And well, it was. This worked. ain't last week. This is this week. Yeah, I know. Uh, we play David Moore over Ridley? Yes. But not Tate. God, do you hate Golden Tate? All right, I'm not as high. All right, Browns guys, Jarvis Landry, we know he's been a huge, he's like the Jordan Howard of wide receivers. Brutal matchup. I don't, um, yeah, I don't think he's playing. He's probably going to score because that's how this oh, works. I mean, again, they're probably not going to get shut out. Right. So it's either going to be, I guess, Chubb, right. a rushing TD, or one of the receivers. Or Joku. One, Joku. one of the receivers is going to catch something, yeah. but I wouldn't expect big passing stats. Right. I think this could be a good Joku game, but it's just at this point, Landry, yeah, he, everyone's benching him now. He probably will score, yeah. but there's no real reason. All right, tight ends. Cameron Brait against Carolina. Matt Lacoste. Big Lacoste uh, at Cincinnati, Kyle Rudolph at the Patriots, and CJ Juice Uzuma. Rudolph showed some signs of life last week. Yeah, he did. I don't. I don't necessarily. That doesn't necessarily encourage me. It's all about the matchup yeah. in this one, and the Patriots allow a lot of touchdowns to tight ends. Yeah. So I like that. Lacoste is the total. So Hireman's hurt. Koss had a decent game last week. Cincinnati's terrible against tight ends. Is there any way you'd consider starting him? Over who? Jimmy Graham. Man, that's a tough one. It's so tough to bench a guy like Graham. For Matt Lacoste. For Matt Lacoste. Yeah, that might be overmanaging. Feels like it. Might be overmanaging. But it also feels like, hey, why are you starting to get the broken thumb in a horrible matchup when this guy's got a great... Like, tight end's that position, right, where you can mess around. Yeah. Evan Ingram tries to play. And but again, we played this game with, with Gronk last week. And the, the great tight ends, specifically yeah. like at tight end, they're typically red zone targets. They're right. typically touchdown people. So Jimmy Graham can run around with a broken thumb all day, but they still might throw him a fade from the two-yard well, line. And the bigger thing to me is like, I mean, look, like we've been playing this game with Ricky Seals-Jones all year. Mm-hmm. We've been playing it with CJ Uzuma all year. Great matchups, and they just don't produce. I mean, Uzuma was okay in that, that first stretch when he first yeah, had to the job. Right but. away. But, uh, yeah, like we got Bray seems to me must start. 
Yeah, I mean, he's the only guy in town now. Yeah. Winston was his boy anyway. Carolina can't can't cover tight ends. It's all so, lining yeah. up. So then it's like some of the bad. We mentioned Herndon, who's been good lately, but Tennessee, best against tight ends. I only put Ricky Seals-Jones on here because we can finally say he has a bad matchup. <laughs> no one's starting him. Oh, he's scoring. I know. Oh, well, that's just it. Of week. course he is. But no, finally, after a season full of great matchups where he did nothing. Fast forward to next week. Can we make a note to talk about Ricky Seals-Jones' touchdown nope. when he gets one? Hate him. All right, Jordan Reed. He's an interesting one, right? Seems like he's been... Re-energized by Colt McCoy. But here playing Philly, tough matchup. Yeah, I got to disagree doesn't matter. a little bit about this being... I mean, it technically can be a bad matchup, but... Well, right. I don't think it's a sit when you consider... You just finished talking about... I didn't say like, sit. I'm just... No, I'm you just numbers. finished talking about the Washington receivers. Right. And I know he plays tight end, but, but he's basically a receiver. Right. He had 75, 78 yards last week. Right. McCoy does seem to throw to him more... Yeah, I no, I agree. I, you know, I put Reed in my lineup, and I don't really worry about right. it. Right? No, I agree. I agree. I think he's he's a must start. But yeah, to me, Graham, Ingram, if he does play, those are the interesting ones of guys who I throw Trey Burton in there. Talk about a guy who's done nothing. So yeah. Sub one point the last two weeks. I mean, the thing with Graham. So comparing Graham to some of your good matchups, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have a problem starting Braid over him. Right. Wouldn't have a problem Agreed. even starting Rudolph over him. Agreed. But you but get down to Lacoste. Those are kind of name guys. You get down to Lacoste and you're like, the Lacoste right, is the Uzumas of the world. Yeah, yeah. You feel like you have to start Jimmy Graham, but I'm saying maybe you shouldn't. Yeah. But I also would have a very, I have Trey Burton, and I certainly wasn't going out looking for, you know, Trey Burton doesn't have a broken thumb. Right. Just, just played like he has had one. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not, I mean, I'm out of it too, so I don't care that much. Right. But I try to put myself in the mindset of a winner. Right. I always try to keep myself in that mind <laughs> the mindset of a winner. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I, I wouldn't make a move either. So totally get it, but at least something to consider. The good matchups with tight ends often pay off. All right. That's the good and the bad. Anything else? We already talked about Bold City a lot. A lot. Anything- we talked about, we talked about the Fournette fight sequence. And cross that off our list of other things to talk about. Yeah. I just enjoyed the whole first and goal from the one, and it was what? They get stuffed, false start. 15-yard penalty. Holding, yeah, holding penalty, missed field goal. Man, if you had Buffalo in a pick, I'm like, I I mean, did. at that point, like, I mean, you know, we both had Buffalo in our picks league. Oh, right? that's great. I had just seen Fournette get tossed, so I was so rooting for that. And then the missed field goal. Yeah. I was so rooting Josh for that. Josh Allen comes out. Yeah. Pumping up the crowd. Yeah, all of a sudden, I was a huge Buffalo fan. Oh, my gosh. What a great moment. All right, here's another you one. you want to talk about awesome records and streaks? I mean, this is one that is in the Hall of Fame, I'm sure. They here's had- the, the beauty of this. I'll let you explain it. But the beauty of it is that it's not even the longest streak. So That's the beauty of it. Launching the Chargers-Cardinals game. First quarter. Keenan Allen makes a catch. Up pops the graphic. Keenan Allen. Wait a minute, he made a catch? No, well, his second catch okay. of the game. And up pops the graphic. Keenan Allen has caught at least two passes in 63 straight games. F- fourth longest active streak. <laughs> That's what cut me. Like, if it was the the most, Years. would you give it a little something if it was the longest streak? No. Oh, actually, I didn't even know. This is fourth longest active. Yeah, active. <laughs> Career. There's three other guys currently, and it's like two catches. Right. Like you got to get at least a five. Well, you know, before what I mean? I'm paying well, we attention. Had, we had the Antonio Brown like five right. catch, fifty yard streak, which was kind of cool. Right. But it's funny the two catch. All the two catch does is separate the like. Well, well, we got this guy in a catch streak. <laughs> right. So we threw him a dump off. The right. two is like, all right, now we got to separate into a catch streak. Actually, two. Like anyone's ever thought about that before? It's kind of pass it every game. Yeah. My favorite thing is the fact that it's the fourth longest. Active. Right. So this isn't even a record. Active. It isn't even Not even close. It's not the best current. Well, I have I have a problem with a lot of like It did kind of make me wonder who are the other three. <laughs> but <laughs> like I do I do get annoyed with fake what I would call like fake records. Right. Like when they say like most touchdowns over four games, most touchdowns over six games. Like those aren't records to mm-hmm. me. They're not, they're just not. And they do that far too much. Yeah. It can be a milestone or a fact. It can just be interesting trivia. A factoid. It's trivia. But it's not a yeah. record. No. It's like the fourth longest active. And I'm like, two can doesn't every single receiver catch two? Like, <laughs> decent receiver? Every wide receiver one in today's NFL. Right. Today's NFL. In today's NFL should have two catches. Oh, even wide year. receiver, too. In my head, and I guess this is why maybe it's more impressive or giving it credit for him. It's like, yeah, that's what you think. But no, Juju Smith-Schuster had a game where he only caught one. Well, you know, or, it's funny. You know, like, whatever. Do you think most quarterbacks, no matter how bad they are, get to 
what's the average number of completion in the game? 17? Yeah, I would say. So 17 catches. You'd think that there's two catches for wide receiver one and wide receiver two in there, right? Every, yeah, every single There'd week. There'd still be 13 other catches available to everyone else. So I saw that and I was like, who doesn't have two catches? But a catch is a game. But you know what's funny? Does that take out like his injured games? I mean, it has to. Right. So yeah. to me... If it's he played and mm-hmm. caught two catches in 63 consecutive games, it's a little bit better. Right. Then it's like this guy tore his ACL and was out for a year. Yeah. He didn't get two catches in all those games. He sure didn't. I mean, maybe. I got another one for you. Yeah. So watching the Ravens game, because, you know, mm-hmm. big Lamar Jackson guy. Sure, you got to be. And uh, who were they playing last week? Why am I already forgetting? The, the Oakland. Was Oakland. The California oh, okay. Raiders. Right. Yeah, the Oakland Raiders. Right. So I was going against the Ravens D as well. Mm. So I was rooting kind of just for the Raiders to just kind of score and just keep moving the ball or whatever. So I'm watching the game, and uh, this Ravens dude <laughs> sacks Carr on second down. Right. Not on third down. Not on fourth down. Mm. Not on some big goal line. Like, sacks him and runs off the field. Well, he didn't high-five his teammate and return to the I huddle? I don't know. I don't remember. Oh. And... Uh, through the tunnel. Yeah, but right? I'm like, did. okay, he's just in the tunnel. No, he kept going to like the end of the tunnel. Yeah, I saw a I did, chain link fence. I could fence. see a fence, maybe some trees. Right. Yeah. It's like, what's this dude doing? Yeah. He, well, if I recall, that was his third consecutive sack, well, right? Well, okay. So I didn't have sound on for that game. Right. So I didn't know if they were saying anything about him. Whatever. So but as I was preparing for the podcast, sure. like I do diligently every mm. week, I was like, let me find out this guy's name. I don't want to just say some Ravens guy. Right. So I looked up who had sacks for the Ravens and only one guy had sacks. He had three of them. Right. So maybe they were. Well, how? Yeah, could, it was consecutive plays. It was the, the how last could he, play of the previous okay. series. So say, how could you get the second down? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because his name is Matthew Judon. Correct. Judon. Not right. sure how you say it. Probably Judon. And, uh, Second down sack runs yeah. out of the building, but even but you're right. Even like even if he did have a con- active consecutive streak of sacks, right? Uh, it was still second down, right? And three, that's cool, right? And I guess in that, but it's like th- the different series breaks that right. up, right? Maybe it's so three it's and really out, two. Like I only right. this whole series. They yeah. went three and out on my three. Like, you sacks. know, sometimes you watch baseball and the guy it, like the shortstop, all three plays right. shortstop the first. You're like tied a record Big set deal. by many, right? Or like the yeah. first baseman taking three unassisted, right? Right, which is pretty big. something. Every center fielder, catch. Right. but yeah, this was like. So third down, bro. Right. And he was so far away. I would have suspended let's, him. Let's say the sack was on about the 20. Right. So he ran 20 yards to the end zone, 10 yards through it. Yeah. Then out through the At tunnel. At least 20 up the he tunnel. Probably 40 yards from oh, the yeah. line of scrimmage. And if he's such a sack artist, uh, right. probably needs to be hit on third and long. Well, I mean, that should be ears pinned back. Like, I'm going to finish off this drive. And then as I was... Bitching and moaning about this to you via yeah. text. Then you brought up how the Ravens D is just a bunch of front, front runners, runners, man. Just front just runners. Just a bunch of front runners. I, that team. It starts at Suggs. I can't stand I can't stand them. They're just, yeah, they play a bad defense or a bad offense. Oh, look at us. That fumble recovery from the middle of the field. Middle like of the field for a D lineman. Away. I was like, what's going on? Who's immediately looking to pitch the ball and somehow oh, he scores. I couldn't believe it. Everything went wrong yeah. on Sunday. That but was just no, part of it. That team. I, uh, that team drives me nuts because, yeah, they play the Bills or they play the Raiders or bad offense. And they're, and they're just toughest guys the in the room. Yeah. They play the Saints. What are they going to do against Atlanta? Yeah, turtle. Gonna That's be, what they're going to they do. They're be running through the tunnel against no, Atlanta. No, they're going to turtle against Atlanta even though I don't like any <laughs> yeah, Atlanta yeah, players. So let me ask you a question. The sack record was mm-hmm. called a record for three consecutive sacks. Active? Whatever. And yeah, Keenan Allen, fourth right. longest streak guy. Either one certificate worthy. I mean, it's tough to get a certificate. We've set the bar kind of high for a certificate. I mean, True. to be fair, the certificate was given out at a for a very important thing. True. Very so true. no, not so a Matthew certificate. Judon doesn't get a certificate. The thing is, this is certificate worthy, and Bree should have gotten like a, a bust <laughs> right. or a trophy. Right. But instead, about, they gave him the certificate. How about two ninety-seven yard touchdowns this week, both by Pretty players good. who'd already done it? Pretty good. Because when Juju did it, mm-hmm. like, no two players have two, I guess, right. nine, seven yard scoring plays. Right. Right? And then Lamar Miller popped it off a day later. Yeah. It's crazy I, stuff. I, I didn't, 
yeah, I was very confused by the Lamar Miller thing. They asked Lamar Miller, like, what's it take to do that? And I was, like, screaming at the TV because I wanted him to answer that in a certain mm-hmm. way, and he didn't do that, obviously. Because right. to me, it's kind of like that. Remember the year Chris Johnson yeah. had a bunch of Could long never runs? forget it. My thing with that is always, like, the line of scrimmage like matters, right? Because right. like once you break through, once you get through thirty, it doesn't. You can run for two hundred yards. Right. Most guys are fast enough, right? right? So really, like Lamar Miller, you'd be like, well, I needed to get really good blocking right. from the three good yard blocking line. up front, no safety. But like on the right, that's it. On the right line of scrimmage, play. yeah. Because yeah. you could bust. You could be first and goal from the three. And you might have enough blocking to take a 97 well, yards. I mean, but. different defense, right? But, yeah, I see, you see all the time, like, on a 50-yard touchdown, you're like, that would have been a 100-yard right. touchdown if they were on the one. Right. But so, really, it's does like— Does the defense play differently, how you, I think, is the question. How did you score from the three twice? You're like, well, right. because you were lucky enough to have great blocking when we were at well, the three. Well, I think it's more about how the defense plays it. Yeah. Like, cause you Not f- so much on the pass plays, but on the run play. Yeah, because you figure from a spot like that, like, they're probably going to have deep guys— safeties they're going to be worried about a pass or you know we can contain this run if he gets through the line so that's what it comes out because yeah he wasn't like juking guys yeah. and like you make a couple moves and then you're just in just a, boom, in a foot you're race. done yeah so like to me it's about the line of scrimmage not how great yeah. you are no, i agree that would have been yeah so you wanted him to say this is where the ball is man yeah <laughs> yeah because really chris johnson was the only one who was great at that stuff yeah it's the only one all right that wraps it up this week last week of the fantasy regular season uh, just three more of these. It's been great. Three more after today. Yeah, we'll keep doing them, but this is <laughs> don't expect don't expect our best. We are one. gonna. Ma- I mean, if you thought these have been mailed in, <laughs> at least Eric had the back door open, so he was trying. But woof, I'm I'm out. I couldn't even get an Ethernet cable plugged in or unplugged. Jacob, come down and just. Yeah, he'll do one the podcast man in two or three different voices. Yeah, he'll one man it. He's got a lot going for. Him. He's gonna win our points title. He might win first place too. I mean, he might have Beginner's he might have luck. pocketed what two fifty before the playoffs even start. Beginner's luck. That's <laughs> I don't think that's true, but uh, yeah, James Conner luck. We'll say that. And picking up Philip Lindsay eight minutes before the start of Week One, <laughs> which is a shrewd move. You got to give him credit for that because we had talked about Philip Lindsay, and I was like, yeah, but you know, maybe in Week Seven. Nope. <laughs> Pick nope. him up. We already run and away with sure the enough, job by then. <laughs> sure enough. And I was like, but certainly he's not going to pick him up before we see what happens in week one. He did it. It's been great. All right. So for anything else you're going to need throughout the week, we're going to have sleepers and busts. We're going to have starts and sits. We're going to have rankings, DFS lineups for every site, sleepers for DFS values, stacks, everything you might possibly need. Injury updates, of course, too. Check sportingnews.com slash fantasy. And we'll be back next week to help you with your fantasy playoff matchups. Hopefully you made it. If you didn't, Tune in anyway. Listen and hear more horse talk. <laughs> or maybe we'll talk challenge next week. We still haven't done that. we got a whole lot of season to wrap up on the <laughs> challenge, too. So, for Eric Ferreira, I'm Matt Letusky. Thanks for listening, and until next time.